Welcome back to One Minute Banner Designs, where I basically give you guys a really cool effect that of course is the video's not gonna be one minute, but you're gonna get some really fun ideas and how to get to a cool effect. And then, at, you know, once you know it once, technically you can do it under a minute, okay? So if you're a beginner and you thought this was really cool, I think you'll be able to do it and excite yourself and have some fun. And naturally, if you are at all a beginner, don't forget to check out the everything pack. It's in the always the top link of my descriptions and it's, it's, it's insane. Even featured in a video here today, I have a product that is also included in the amongst the 32 other products I basically have for one purchase and for the rest of your entire life. Whatever new product I end up coming out on self by you guys get absolutely free. So if you guys want incredibly dope assets, also get to join an exclusive Discord community amongst 20, what is like 2,100 people in there? Just have some fun, get connected. You guys will have an, if you, this is almost a money back guaranteed moment. I don't think I've had one person hate it. And we're almost very close, by the way. Thank you for the record for 8,000 people who have like have it. But let's hop into the video now. Now, for the record, I am in a 3,000 by 1,000 pixel ratio. This is just a Twitter header. Now, of course, this can basically, you can do this with any dimension. The first thing where we're gonna have to do though is create one of these. Now, I actually created an entire pack of these and it was really fun. And it's not as easy as it might seem, but it is pretty easy to at least do. Do it well is a question of trial and error, but it's incredibly easy. Let's go ahead and just, just, just do it real quick. So really quickly, we're gonna hop into, of course, two different documents. We have that first one that I just said, 3000 by 1000, and then this one's gonna be 3840 by 2160, basically a nice 4K document. We're gonna make a new layer, just like so. Take our brush, and now with this brush, I'm just gonna basically use a nice hard brush, and I'm gonna give myself a few swirls. Now, realistically, if you guys really wonder, these little, like you see how the brush is bad, we can change that with brush settings right, and changing the space into zero, or one, excuse me, and now we have a smooth brush. Doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna give myself a little two S's. Then I'm gonna go to where it says filter, liquify, and then when liquify opens, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit here, use a pretty decent sized brush, and I'm just gonna give myself a few swirls, right? Don't, you can be generous and kind of have some fun. It's gonna be, again, trial and error if you guys really wanna get something really cool out of this, but just like this, you're good, for, like, this is perfect, okay? Now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take this layer, and of course, I have Illustrator open over here as well, and I'm gonna end up doing I'm gonna take this and drag this just strictly right into Illustrator, just like this. And just for the record, the Illustrator canvas is like, I think 5,000 by 5,000. It's just a, it's just a square, but it doesn't really matter your mentions in it, but just so you guys know. So I'm gonna click on my photo that I just dragged in, right? And if you guys do not have image trace open, go to where it says window and then image trace right here. And then under image trace, this will give you the option when you guys click on the preset to click on sketched art. But from here, it should be as simple as going over here to where it says object, expand, press okay, and touch Ta-da, your image is now a vector, just like that. As you can see, I can use the direct selection tool and select these, and now these are all vector pieces, and this is perfect. But the thing that we wanna go ahead and do is highlight this all one more time, and then I'm gonna go to where it says Object, Path, Simplify, and then this little thing's gonna pop up right here. There's nothing that to really show for it until we click this little cogwheel here, and now here's where I'll go ahead and just press on where it says Convert to Straight Lines. Press that just like so. Move this a little bit further down. We're not gonna go too far up, because then we get it really just a whole bunch of triangles, but if we go just somewhere around here, you can sort of see the pattern that's happening. If I do like 17 or so degrees, right this is probably the best you're gonna get unless you go back into photoshop try it one more time and just rinse and repeat okay so that pack it might be a good deal just because it did take me like about seven hours so and i wish i was kidding so what i mean by that i'm gonna take this here now now we have the straight line image i'll bring it back into photoshop and i'm gonna drag it right into our 3000 by 1000 dimension size banner design right here this needs a lot of contrast for this to work so i did these colors in specific i would recommend you actually choosing these colors because the colors no matter what change at the very end anyway when you with the actual uh, gradient map that I'll show you guys okay for now copy my exact colors the background that I have is e9 e730 for the yellow make this really really big and just like that by the way look it that's a cool pattern still I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a nice simple little color the contrast here is perfect right I'm gonna press Control J to duplicate this layer now though. And now with this duplicated layer, I'm gonna take this, double click on it, and change this color to another high contrast color of some sort, right? So I'm gonna choose this yellow, 8F8E1B. And with this yellow pressing okay, I actually have some settings for this uh, duplicate, okay? I'm gonna copy them really quick and paste it. And what you'll notice here are these three effects, right? So on this actual effect, so the color overlay does not change, right? That's the color that's gonna stick around. But we also have an inner shadow. Now this inner shadow color should be whatever the color is that is in this case, Case my black here so i have to of course click on this make this black to make sure the contrast basically just trying to feed as many contrasty lines so that the end result just looks better in my opinion distance at 35 or even more or even a little bit just around 25 to 30 and then choke at zero size at zero angle at 90 and then the stroke we also need at 
three pixels position on the inside and the color of this should be the background color meaning the yellow that we just gave you guys uh, for the background press ok again you'll see if i zoom in it's more or less us creating these little moments like this that you know kind of allow the the stroke and background and all that good stuff just to give us as much contrast as possible okay from here i'm gonna make another duplicate of the original though press ctrl j on that first original and this color here will actually end up being a nice simple another color again and i actually choose purple for this one and again just a nice high contrast color the purple that i am using though is 661 eea if you just type that in you get the same exact color as me press ok again and where i think i'm gonna put this though let's say all the way on the bottom maybe and try to give myself a nice little contrast over here like so i think that would be cool or either all the way on the top i think either works kind of move it around a little bit something like this might be okay now with this this is basically the entire setup the rest of this is going to be some simple old gradient maps filter galleries and camera raw filter first things first though is a gradient map the first gradient map right here under the actual little double circles and then for this gradient map i'm going to choose this one right here which is basically a pure black on the left uh near like the 75 percent ratio are these two gray colors so this is one of the grays 707070 right next to it as you guys can see is another gray 4d 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 and then one more which is on the far far this right is basically my white and you can kind of make this even higher contrast i would personally so maybe on f2 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 now that we have this i'm going to merge all of these layers together so Control, alt shift and e will give me a duplicate of the entire uh, document layers and also put it into one single layer, which is perfect for us. So I'm gonna right click, convert it into a smart object because we are going to want to ever go back. Uh, this allows us to actually see the effects they put on the layer. So I'm gonna go to where it says filter, filter gallery. So the first thing you guys are gonna click on is plastic wrap. Plastic wrap is under, of course, the artistic tab. If you guys click on it, drop it down, click on plastic wrap. The settings should go as followed, 11, 12, and eight. And then once you've done with plastic wrap, you're gonna click this little plus button down here and then change this new one into crosshatch. Now crosshatch is under brush strokes and it's the third one right here. And we're gonna change this to three, six, and one. And then we're gonna click this plus button one more time. Surprise, you can add more than one filter gallery without going in and out, okay? I, this is definitely news for someone out there and I just blew his mind. And the last one here though is plastic wrap. So nine, one, and 15 are the settings. And this one is also under artistic right here. And this is more or less gonna be the major part of this effect. I'm gonna choose to put my highlights maybe a little bit up. I think 10 is okay for this one, 10, one, 15. It might vary for you guys, and I'm gonna press OK. From here, we're gonna do the Control, Alt, Shift, and E one more time. That makes a duplicate for us. Once again, right click on this layer, convert it to a smart object. And for this time, we're gonna go to Filter, Camera, Raw, Filter. Under Camera, Raw, Filter, as soon as it opens up, we're gonna click on this little uh, square right here, and this will give us the cycle between before and after, right? And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Effects, take our texture, and drag this quite literally all the way up to 100. The clarity pretty far up as well. And now now what we want to do is quickly eh, maybe the, even the, the detail the sharpening we're going to bring this up quite a lot too now if you do get some banding lines which is basically if you put this sharpening all the way up you see this right here these are color banding lines it's not sexy right in design so i would either say put up your noise reduction as well maybe all the way up just enough to maybe get rid of them mostly they right here is pretty good so those banding lines are a no-go trust me okay and now what we can do is under lights we can go to where it says the uh shadows here and just bring up the shadows a little bit highlights up maybe the black down the whites we can throw up a little bit as well right you should see a very heavy contrast difference from your before and your after and i think we nailed that here as well as a bunch of sharpen a bunch of clarity and a bunch of texture so once you're good with that you can press ok and now we're finally at the part where you get to see the effect come to life which is basically clicking on the adjustments layer one more time going to gradient map one more time and this time setting up your gradient map to look something like this this gradient map specifically is an inverted gradient map meaning it uses a color for the shadows this in specific on the far left hand side i have a color red now you can copy this and adjust it as you guys wish. All I really have to do at this point is I press on my little text tool here, type in my fun little word. This can be the name of your banner and what up or whatever it is, but I'm just gonna choose the word minute, give it a simple text effect, press okay, press okay again. And realistically, my banner is done. And the cool part is the whole point of this series is that this is some pretty easy stuff. Once you kind of get it once, you'll do it over again way, way faster and probably under a minute. But realistically, that's all it really is. Now, of course, you want to change the color you're like, so I don't like red. Well, change 
the change the red color to like a color that you really like it might take a little bit of color theory to figure out what you want to do but i can choose like a pink with maybe the secondary color being like a blue or a green maybe i of course wouldn't be afraid as well to sort of make the actual layer itself bigger and manipulate it as well if you guys want to uh if you also ever want to consider messing around with the actual colors as well too what i will recommend you to do okay is make a new layer right below the gradient map layer that we have of course controlling the colors here click on your color picker choose it to be like a nice sort of light color that's basically all you have to do um i'll just choose whatever light color it is and with a little bit of pigment click on the actual layer use your brush a nice zero hardness brush and then with white just click around maybe not super harsh but you can kind of see if you change this normal to pin light it should be a little bit more easier to kind of like navigate so let's try again same exact layer on pin light though and we're going to just sort of click around and you can sort of mess around with using the actual gradient in your favor too in some way there you go there we go that's making a little more sense i'm using the very very edge of my brush for this by the way you, you see me not clicking in the center here right you can still manipulate the banner inside of the gradient itself and probably go crazy with some more photo filters but this is this is fun this is it so with that i hope it was incredibly fun incredibly easy to do and uh yeah you can just go flirt with photoshop a little bit and learn some stuff but with that that is Ciso hq out do not forget to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking better guys that much love peace and uh yeah later <laughs>